Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another video of ours. It's the relegation promotion playoff preview. Sean's here and um, how are your nails, Sean, basically? Uh, moved on to my fingers now. There's no more left to chew. I would have thought so. I would have thought so. UCD okay. and Waterford FC. We were talking before we came on. It feels like the sequel here, doesn't it? I mean, this was the fixer last year in the promotion relegation playoff, except it was roles reverse, of course. Uh, Waterford were the Premier Division team. UCD were the first division team. Going into that, though, there was a lot of upheaval at Waterford, to say the least, wasn't there? Uh, this year, I would say that's reverse as well. There's um good, you know, good news stories, good feel factor around the global Waterford uh, coming into this fixers. Result-wise, you would say, but also obviously off the field as well. And it's, it paints a completely different picture, even though, you know, it's the same two teams, the same ground as well, Richmond Park as well. But... Uh, how are you feeling overall about the fixture? Are you confident? Um, some people I've seen uh, said Keith and Gavin aren't here today. They must have chickened out. They they think Waterford will win easily, but uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. I don't know how you think about that now. Uh, well, yeah, uh, we're ob obviously there's a lot that's put into perspective because of what happened last year, and compared to that, you know we feel comparatively a lot more confident. Yeah. Uh, we're a lot stronger than we were last year, and mm -hmm. I don't think UCD are as strong as they were last year. But uh, there's obviously nerves, you know, as you would feel for any knockout game, especially when your club is involved, So uh, and when there's so much at stake. Uh, it's hard not to get a bit nervous heading into the game. I just remember quickly, we didn't talk too much about last year's game, but uh, the actual game itself, I do remember Waterford were very, very, very long ball in that game, and it was aimless long ball, wasn't it? And I remember trying to, I remember looking at it going, what are they actually trying to do here? Um, now a lot of the off field stuff played into that, into the the fixture, in my opinion as well, and maybe players were just their heads weren't there as such, and UCD obviously took advantage of that. UCD obviously now spent the season in the Premier Division. They were expected to finish tenth. They haven't. They finished ninth. Ahead of Finn Harps. They took 10 points from Finn Harps this season, which obviously proved to be absolutely crucial for them. And I have to say, though, as the season's gone on, they have improved, though, uh, Sean, to be fair, UCD. Um, the results overall have improved. They've had some performances where you thought, you know, they've been decent here. Like, they, I'll give you an example. They've played Pats four times this season, for example, and they've lost all four, but the highest win Pats had was by two goals. So they haven't been really beaten heavily this season. Once by Derry City, they were. Tommy Lonergan has come into the team. Uh, you know, Whelan got injured, obviously, halfway through the season. Lonergan's come in since the 18-year-old striker, and he scored goals. Dylan Duffy's dangerous. If he's fit, there's a question mark there. Evan Caffrey, Brennan in the middle of the park. They've got Todd, the centre-back, who was at Harps previously, uh, captain of the team as well. And uh, Andy Myler, you know, is, um, is, a, is a good manager as well. So... Um, from a Waterford perspective, then, where do you see the, the biggest threat in terms of maybe a tactical thing or maybe even players? Well, um, I think the two teams match up very similarly. Um, I was, before the playoffs, hoping that uh, it would be UCD because there's obviously the you know the whole revenge story and all that, but UCD play a lot more similarly to us, which I think suits us. Um I think UCD will miss Colin Whelan and they'll also miss Liam Kerrigan, who they had last year and was uh, very influential in taking us apart last year. <laughs> uh, from our perspective, uh, it wasn't our best performance against Galloway. Uh, it sort of came down to, uh, uh, I think, as I said in the preview, individual moments of brilliance or, in this case, errors from Galloway in some cases. But um, uh, for our threats, I have to say, um, and I've given him a lot of stick over the course of the season but Yassin Nenea has really stepped up to the plate and to fill in at midfield in the role I didn't think he was capable of filling but he's done quite well um, obviously our danger comes from Phoenix a junior if they can if they can uh, get loose then uh, we'll really have a good time going back to last year's fixture you know uh, it there is a lot that says uh, we're going to I mean there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to do better Yeah. whether or not we'll win don't know but there's definitely we're going to do better because there was a whole thing with Ian Hendon coming in. He didn't bother learning the players' names, didn't bother doing that, and didn't meet the players. Instead, he went for a dinner by himself. Um, but um, he, uh, he, he he put Greg Halford up front and said, you see, he won't be able to deal with the long ball play, which shows he didn't know what was going on in the first division. Did no reason I remember that, that as well. I know Halford wasn't exactly mobile either, but was he? No, he wasn't. He wasn't. It was like playing with 10 men at times because, like, you know, he just... 
you know, I mean, look, in fairness to Greg Halford, like, you know, that's not a role he asked to play. But um, we're, we're much better equipped. Wasim will definitely be more mobile and is a better finisher. So uh, I think big come from for us, it's down the wings. But uh, mm. I think we also have the potential to do stuff through the middle as well. I think like it's it's at times it feels like it's boring talking about Phoenix Patterson and Junior. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I mean it does in a way, doesn't it? But at the same time, like I was thinking about this earlier, and I was saying to myself that, but they're the kind of um, you know, the star quality that maybe UCD they have good players. Don't get me wrong, but they did don't have. So if those two perform, and they can perform when Waterford aren't playing particularly well with moments now, even seeing it against Galway, for me, Junior was excellent. He got two goals, but it had nothing to do with the two goals. Conor Cairns probably should have done better with at least one, if not two. Mm. But the way he played in the game, I think he he picked up a ball, he nutmegged uh, one of the Galway defenders. Lovely way to true ball to Fat Patterson, who just shot shots wide. And uh, Junior was probably the better of the two on that day. But you just feel, if you're a UCD, like, for example, as well, you feel... If them two perform, it's very difficult not to see Waterford winning. It's very difficult mm. to see UCD stop them both as well because even if they don't play particularly well on the night, they can produce little bits of moments that can win the game for Waterford. And for that reason, you probably have to give the edge to Waterford, like, you know? Mm. Yeah, and I was looking, the bookies have, it's it's evens, really. Uh, both teams with the same odds of winning and... Uh... You know, I look. I suppose I do downplay our chances a bit, but uh, that's probably fair. Um, mm. in a one-off game, I think the reason UCD suit us better. You know, Andy Myler will have that headache. He can't. I think he will have to just rely on his players to play the best game they're capable of. Because, yeah. and it's the reason I wanted to play UCD as opposed to Harf because UCD can't afford to retreat and try mm. and shut down the game in a way that say. Uh, Shelburne or Cork have done in the past so um, I'm expecting an open game and uh, if even one of those players if even one of Junior or Phoenix performs one of them doesn't have a good game it could be the key to us winning Yeah absolutely and UCD as well they've like midfield have got good ball players Caffrey and Brennan which you'd expect them to have like you know they always have done Higgins is a good player as well he came in from Galway actually as well but then with Waterford you've got O'Keefe and Griffin but they have a bit of bite. They can play, but they also have a bit of um, bite about them as well. So I, I don't know. That you, I expect Waterford to be a bit, little bit more physical maybe in the midfield than UCD as well. I think so. And I think that's where um, uh, Niall O'Keefe and uh, Yasin and Nea will offer a lot. Shane Griffin too, but particularly Yasin and Niall O'Keefe, will, uh, they're, definitely gonna ta- they're definitely going to be hard tackling. Um it was it was a bit of a stroke of good luck maybe that uh, we got to the we got to the stage and didn't have any players suspended. So mm-hmm. aside from Roland Nado, who's injured for for this mm-hmm. game, hopefully we'll be back next season. Um, we have a full complement to choose from, so um, we don't have to worry about uh, you know maybe sticking a player who's not as good in his position that he's not familiar with. So that's mm-hmm. um, fortunate too. Um, one player I was keeping my eye on. Aside from Tommy Lonergan, obviously, who's been phenomenal for UCD since the midway point of the season, is Mark Dignan, who scored two phenomenal goals in the past three weeks out in the wing there. I do feel there's a bit of susceptibility in the defence. Now, uh, Cantwell and Baptiste in particular were standing last week mm. against Galway. Really oh, they headed the everything away nearly, didn't they? Yeah it, was, yeah, it was like watching, you know, just every time the ball came to him. But Dignan has that shot from distance in him and... Uh, you know, uh, in the same way that Phoenix or Junior could have one brilliant moment, uh, I think he's capable of that too and we'll have to watch out for him. Mm. Yeah, it's weird because there's more pressure on Waterford, clearly. Mm. Absolutely. But UCD won't play with fear either, like, you know, that kind of way. So you've that mm. dynamic as well because it yeah. sounds strange, but like if UCD get relegated, it's not a disaster. And in a way no. that might help them. Whereas Waterford, I'm not saying disaster if they don't go up. Mm. I think um, the owners will look at it and say, but next year we'll definitely have to go up, but they'll see it as a good opportunity. But clubs like Waterford, it's more important, let's say, mm. that they're in the Premier Division than UCD. But that can weirdly work in UCD's favour. And I know Waterford are going to have a massive crowd there and it's going to be noisy. But again, UCD are used to that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They'll go yeah. to Tala and they'll play at home to Rovers and all these teams, any team. And, you know, the the, the other side are being backed, basically, and they're not being backed as much, you know? So... None of that, I don't think, matters to UCD. And 
in a weird way that could help them. But so it'll be interesting to see if Waterford can, and so far they have, by the way, um, coming through up to playoffs, handle the pressure because you know the treaty game. Of course, there was pressure in that. In the Galway game, I thought particularly there was pressure in it because Galway, we know, it can be difficult. They can be rugged. They can be tough. Getting the early goal helped in that game absolutely, and one or two things went against Galway, like missed penalties and errors and and that kind of thing. So it landed to Waterford winning the game easily, let's say. But that's going to be interesting to see how Waterford uh, bring that bring the occasion into the game. I think. I think so, and as you mentioned, UCD won't play it with fear, and nor should they, because if they do, that you know they won't play at their best. Mm-hmm. The UCD's best game is, um, you know, like the 3-2 win against Dundalk or, uh, you know, the 3-1 win against Harps where mm-hmm. their football is just too much. Sly goes well beaten, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, so uh, uh, I think, you know, I'm expecting a very open game. And uh, there is there is a bit of pressure on us to do this one because, there, well, there was, I suppose there was pressure in the 3 game, but that was over two legs. Mm. And there was a bit of pressure in the Galway game, but Galway were also under pressure as well, yeah. uh, particularly Caulfield. And um, you know, so I suppose this is this is the most pressure I, I can say from a fan's perspective that um I felt in order to win a game. But um, you know, I hope the players don't feel that, you know. I mean, look, I'm sure they're used to it by this stage. They've had a lot of occasions this season, but uh um, you know, I hope we don't play with fear either because um, if if we do that, what I'd like to see us do. You, you see, they are very good at sensing that. By the way, that's something they're good mm, they at. Are. When they're on their, when they're on it, they can sense. Oh, they that. are. Well, they are, and 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 um, I suppose one thing they don't have from last season that did that they did have last season was their revenge motivation because <laughs> they they lost that quarter final. They played far better than us. I don't know how they didn't win it, and uh, you know, got a controversial last minute winner. For us, and uh, you know that all fed into it. I could see it happening that UCD would smell blood, and then of course, back person being sacked was the nail in the coffin. Really, we kind of knew it was going to happen. Um, but uh, you know, I think what I'd like to see us do, and I think how we can win the game is if we have if we have that good start, if we get one goal, you know, we get UCD oh. a bit disorganized. I think we hopefully we'll um hopefully we'll pile on. You know, mm. I, I don't want to see a standoff. I think if we get one goal, we should go for the second mm. one immediately afterwards. You know, really try to. That said, to like, um, I wouldn't say standoff, you're right, but mm. but they can play. In, like, they did that against Galway, actually, when they went 1 0 off Galway, a lot of the ball, but the onus was on them to have a lot of the ball. But then you're looking at Waterford and going, if you go one up, let's say UCD, you're going to leave even more space in behind the way they play mm. as well. And, you know, that's a playground for the likes of Patterson and. Uh, and junior as well, but um, like the other thing is as well, like um, as I said, we talk about them too as well. But another player that I think has done very well and really showed his prowess physically up front is Wazim. He gives them that, mm. um, and you saw it in that goal against Galway. Yes, the Galway mm. defender makes a mistake, but if Wazim doesn't sense that and make that run, it, it nothing happens really. He miscontrols mm. the ball and maybe plays it back to the keeper. But you could see how physically, and he had the desire and the hunger to close that down and then finish it well. So Azim kind of gives you that bit of, uh, you know, something else to that attack as well that maybe the other players don't provide. So the balance is good there, isn't it? Yeah, it does. And uh, it was funny because I didn't think he was having a very good game at Galway until he scored the goal. He just seemed to sense, uh, you know, that there was a, that there was an error to be made. And you can kind of see when he was bearing down on, um, I don't know who the Galway defender was, we'll have to watch it again, but you could sense the error was coming. I remember that at the time, behind. but I can't now. I think it was Hemmings actually, but anyway... I think yeah, you could be right, yeah. but um, you know he's he's really I I'm always surprised because you know it's it, it seems like you know he he hasn't scored that much for us, but he scored I think fourteen goals in all competitions <laughs> since you come in, so he's he's been fairly prolific, and uh, he does offer you he does offer you that bite up front. Uh, UCD's player uh, UCD defenders, you know Keeney and uh, Todd, yeah, against them. It's good, you know, they're going to be sore after the game, regardless of whether it's a win or a loss. And um, if that doesn't work out, then we have Raul Luce, who's a very different style of player. And yeah. that helps, you know, because maybe if our team isn't working out, mm. you want a player who's a bit more capable with the ball at his feet and links up better. And, you know, as a player who more gets in behind the defence. So we've got options there. Uh, he's got eight goals us. and 15 in the league and he's scored some cup goals as well. So you wouldn't be too far away mm. from that, I'd say. 
Yeah. So um, we've got a lot going forward. And then, of course, um, fullbacks as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, very good going forward. Sobowale and Dara Power are both capable of swinging it in. Uh, the ones Wale can be got at a little bit sometimes defensively. The penalty he gave away was pretty yeah. poor, wasn't it, against Galway mm, as well? Yeah. He has to be a bit wary that he can be a bit, uh, he can lunge in at times and just that's be right, yeah. his head a little bit. Mm, that's three penalties in three games, which is not great. That being said, Paul Martin has, um, <laughs> uh, he, he's got a fairly good record when it comes to saving them. So um, I suppose that's something. You'd be as hoping well. it doesn't go to that stage. Yeah, like hopefully we don't weeks. give him. We don't have we don't have we don't force him into a save. Yeah. Um but uh yeah, we've got lots of attacking options and uh yeah. I think our best strategy is to do as we've been doing all season and hopefully uh, overwhelm U C D. Uh on the flip side I suppose they'll be hoping to do the same to us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm trying to take a prediction myself. I'll ask you in a minute, or are you too nervous to give one? <laughs> uh, no, bad omen now. I bad can't omen. Predictions at this time. Bad omen. I think mm. I think Waterford just about, I think they might nick it. I think uh, be very surprised there isn't more than a couple of goals in the game. Maybe 2-1 Waterford. I think it will be an open game. I can't see it not being an open, open game. There will be a bit of nerves, but it'll be, mm. it'll be open with a bit of nerves, if you know what I mean. But really, I'm personally really looking forward to it because I was there last year as well. And... Uh, there's an edge to it. Feels like there's an edge to it. Um, and this one I'm really looking forward to. So uh, look, best of luck, Sean. I might even see you there. You're going to be there yeah. yourself, obviously, aren't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. So massive water for crowd going to this game, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Made the best team win, I suppose is the best thing you can say there. But uh, we we'll leave it there, guys. Let us know what you think in the comments. Give us a few predictions. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit your bell notification button. Thanks for watching as usual. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Keith.